Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Welcome to part five. This time I'm addressing my usual audience, not the uh, the opposition. It is the blackest hearted, blackest mind, the blackest man on social media, signing, blacking, and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than fool the huck I am. No, I didn't cuss. Sorry about the wind noise. There's really nothing I can do about it anyway. Uh, sometimes I wish this climate was a bit more humid because I've noticed that humid places tend to have less wind too. Here, the wind is as, I'm like, I'm nowhere near a beach and the wind is constant like there's a beach, which helps you to cool off. It's cool, but when I want to record, I'm like, man, shuck this fit. Sick of this wind all the time. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. I just have to talk over it. So that being said, I'm addressing a normal audience, but I'm talking about Taz and Nyla. Now other people hate them so much they're starting to call them ass and Lila. I'm not going to go that far, but I, but I laugh when other people do it because it does sound kind of funny sometimes. Even the other people that Cookie Monstar said she was going to expose came onto her panel and said that they've had their own surprising stories and revelations about Taz and Lila. Uh, Nyla. Sorry about that. That really was a Freudian slip. No joke. But what I want you all to understand, I want you guys to realize in the, in the audience that the important lesson for this is the one that we did not take from the Cynthia G debacle. Number one, no teps are hypocrites. Now, actual hoteps, although I don't walk around saying hotep and I'm not Egyptian, actual hoteps or rather authentic pro-black people usually tried to avoid hypocrisy back in the day. <laughs> However, no teps don't. Now, I don't know why they're going from place to place. My suspicion is that Taz can't get a place in his name because of income and felonies. Nyla can't get it because she doesn't want anything in her name uh, if she's trying to actually run from a lawsuit, if that really is the case. That's my suspicion. But see, that's speculation. And I'm not going to assume that a speculation is correct, which is more than what they've done. They have assumed that we're a bunch of gays and pedophiles who, for some odd reason, are too stupid to know that third world countries are not the places to go to prison for pedophilia or to be trying to practice open homosexuality and too stupid to know that the black community in America is actually one of the best places nowadays to be a homosexual male. Now, I'm not saying that black folks don't have some homophobia and I don't condemn homophobia. What I am saying is that lately it's become one of those places because we have a, you know, live and let live. And frankly, hey, look, you could be a gay black man and get a job easily. Studies have shown that. That's another recording for another day. But yes, studies prove that if you are a black gay man, you don't face job discrimination. You just, you actually, you don't face it. You face no more than a heterosexual white male. A gay white male faces more job discrimination than a gay black male does. What does that tell you? That's a war on black male heterosexuality. Why? Simple. If you hate a people, you don't want them having sex and having babies. And at least not with each other. Since people do not practice celibacy very well, then you simply want them to engage in something that would discharge them without them having any babies. And if you're a devil, you want them to engage in the nastiest kind of sex so that they're pretty much bound to go to hell when they close their eyes for the last time and stand in front of God. That's what you want. And don't make any bones about it. The average white person is not worshiping the devil and getting orders from spirits that they can't see and holding seances to get these orders. It's not that. But the ones at the top of their communities are. That is very true. The ones who call the shots are doing this. And I only know that because I've actually um, seen interviews where people would admit to stuff like this. Now, that being said, what's important for us is that Cynthia G., um, was a bit of a shock, you know, open hypocrisy. And I'm sure there are other stories from before even YouTube, let alone the Manosphere and the gender wars, other stories of outright hypocrisy. But I want to tell you this too, though. Um, 
when Cynthia G's debacle happened, we did not completely shut her down because she was allowed to go on women's fear panels and live streams and be taken seriously. But the problem is that uh, while well, she was allowed to go on women's streams, live streams and be taken seriously, live streams, uh, I don't mean specifically the YouTube or black woman's fear, but that she's one of them. But the thing is that when, after this debacle, other women took her seriously, she was on with Nyla talking about some who gonna check us boo. And with black woman's fear, but I'm talking about just the overall women's fear. Not one YouTube channel to use it. The point is she was allowed to go on them and be taken seriously, have a voice, talk, tell niggas, tell women what they should and should not do with these men. And, you know, how we should, uh, we should be treated and relegated to celibacy because we're not alpha enough and we've never built anything and completely overlooking the fact that actually black men did not fight court battles trying to get access to white women and that uh, additionally we did build stuff and they tore it down every goddamn time. New Jersey self-defense for as much as he does not want me to be considered black he was right about that and I'll support him on that. Even if he changed his mind about that I would be the one to say no he used to be right what the hell happened. You had the right answer the first time, bruh. Erase that wrong answer and put the right answer back on there. That's, that would be my stance. Because I know that they think lightly of doing stuff like this when, when people are black. They don't think morally against it. They, I know they don't because I've heard them talk. They've admitted to stuff like this. That nigga's got too much money. Or, you know, come on, man, a black nation with all of that? They gotta be doing something wrong, man. That's how they think. Now, this being said, the lesson we need to learn is real simple, actually. We need to have a long memory about this. What we black folks tend to do is the same thing that many human beings do, but we do it a little bit worse when it comes to memory. We tend to have a long memory when we should forget things, and we tend to have a short memory when we should remember them. Cynthia G., for the most part, fortunately, um, did this time get a more long memoried reaction from us thank god we're not forgetting that i want to make sure that we actually repeat that correction and not the previous mistakes when it comes to this do not forget that nyla and taz are trifling and duplicitous and hypocrites don't forget it do not forget the hypocrisy of anybody else once you have seen clear-cut evidence of it that goes for me too I may seem to be a hypocrite one day. Chances are it may just be because of something that I don't disclose, but if I appear to be a hypocrite, let me know. Because if you say you're going to be a hypocrite, I mean, if, if you're going to be a hypocrite, then you're wrong even if it's me doing it. So I need to be careful just like everybody else. It's easy for anybody to fall into if they're not checking themselves. But if you're checking yourself, taking yourself to task beforehand it's very easy to avoid and that's what i hope to see us do avoid it now this being said um don't ever let them live this down do not debate them do not bring them on live streams none of that stuff keep them at arm's distance like persona non grata until they go against themselves pretty much until they talk bad about themselves for what they've been doing versus what they've been saying. Now, if they were going through all this stuff and they went out here talking so much, I might fuck the shuck up. Hell, we wouldn't know about them. And if we did, we wouldn't say that they were hypocrites. But now it's like you talking all this stuff and this what you doing. This is how you live it. I mean, hey, at least she said I like toxic masculinity. At least she was honest about that. But hey, look, that shows the triflingness of what we're dealing with. This is what represents the so-called pro-blacks today, the real pro wax The BB1s, black bitches first. Black vaginas first. Because they ain't really black first. Frances Cress Wilson herself said that the men are going to be targeted for oppression mostly, not so much because the woman's not also included, but so that she will be included by default. The main target is the man because then they've already got the woman. They understand the integral role that each one plays to the other. You oppress the men, you've already oppressed the women. She understands that. You could actually turn around and not oppress the women. But they're going to feel the effects of the oppression on the men because they're going to have sons. 
And now I'm gonna say this, and I want this to be understood. The crux of this argument that we generally have had, it has been about access to the black womb, the black cervix. It has been about that. It has been about sexual satisfaction and about the right to have black children with black women. That's what it's, that's the crux of it at that point. I don't care anymore, and I'm gonna tell you why. If it, I don't care if, if being a man of substance actually meant you had to have the style of Urkel, I wouldn't give a rat's ass. You know why? The women say that the substance is important even when they don't show it. And that's why I say to see Boogie that his video about um, you're a provider, so what, was null and void. It was, it was bumpkiss because you're a provider right off the bat, according to them, in all cultures means, okay, somebody's going to want to screw you. That's what, that's what they say. Now, if it's not true, fine. They need to come out and say this, and they need to tell not even just us grown men. They need to tell their own sons that this is what it is. Whatever the case is, they need to spill the beans even to their sons, let alone their nephews, grandsons, younger brothers. They're not doing this in any society. So when Ron Wills launched that video recently about beware of, of men that say they're good, I understand one thing. That is that... Uh, even though he didn't specifically say it, he was getting at this. I understand that being good does not make you compatible with every woman, fair enough, it does not. The problem again is that for men to, for men to say that they're good and really believe it and really mean it, means that they were taught that being a good guy was good, that that was, uh, that was necessary because their mothers told them this, their grandmothers told them this, their teachers, their older sisters, their older cousins told them this. That's why. Now, if they say that and they know they're lying, that's a different story. I get it. That's altogether different. But when they say this and they don't know that they're lying or they're not lying, uh, rather, it's because that's what they were taught. Who the hell taught them this? It was women. Women that were close to them genetically. I still do not hear these men confronting their matriarchs and gynocrats about the goddamn lying that goes on inside of the homes when they're talking to their young male relatives. And this is why I say to them, or why I said to them previously, although, you know, what, what, what Cookie Monster exposed just now is the reason but I knew of the existence of this pattern of behavior without the details that she knew beforehand. And this is why I say to all of them on that side of the fence, even if they're people that are likable, like Rom, Uncle Rom, as we say, even if it's them. This is why I say to them that we are to go after the young male relatives and tell them what we know that the women they love are not going to tell the young male relatives. We are to go to their cousins, their sons grandsons, younger brothers, nephews at a young age and let them know, not through YouTube necessarily, but face to face, let them know right off the bat, these women are lying about the things that they want. And if you are going to be this kind of guy, you are going to be treated this way. And if you want to be treated a different way, you're going to have to act this bad way. And even then, you still may have to be a bit taller to get away with it. Or you may have to have not just money, but a flashy ride to get away with it. Let them know. Let them know all the stuff you see on TV and that you even hear from your lady relatives is bumpkiss. Asalaamu Alaikum. Asif. نعم أنا أصير دبل الآن ألا أنا وجدت المسجد مغلوق الآن فلا لا أمانة ولكن لازم أنا لازم أنا أضع هذا لزوجتي هي تنتظر إني واسع يصب بارد فذلك السبب سأصل الداخل ولكن أشكرك إذا أرك بكرة سنصير جميعا Sorry about that. I wasn't expecting uh, him to stop me, but see, the massage are closed right now, so we can't pray indoors, and I'm carrying food that's about to get cold for my wife. Uh, she's worth carrying food back home for, but it's not heavy, and I needed to walk anyway, so I'm very lucky. But that goes back to what I've been saying. I had to leave to find this. You know what? 
she's already considering that if my stamina, if you will, is too much for her looking for a second wife. I'm not supposed to know that she's considering it, but I hear things. I don't really want a second one, but I think that that should always be an option. The fact that she would be willing to do this is one of the reasons she doesn't, she's, she is one of the reasons she deserves to not have to deal with that if it's really that difficult for. But a lot of you back there, you're not gonna deal with something like this. I, I would have never thought this. Five years ago, I'd have never thought I'd find this. But I want you guys to understand and keep this in mind that, uh, that there are more nihilists out there than what you think and we should never forget what they did and then treat them like persona non grata. No debates, no bringing them on live streams, none of that stuff, no more listening. He comes on he comes on the panel and you don't know what's him, he starts talking, oh, it's you, buy a click, that's it. Put him off. He's in the chat. Mute him. Time him out. That's what we should be doing now. Now, we can wait for the receipts to drop on those websites. Fair enough. That's fine. But you know what? Once they do drop, time them out. Just no. Uh uh. Just we ain't got nothing. We ain't, we ain't listening to nothing you say no more. If they want to apologize, let them prove it and live it quietly we ain't got nothing to say to them no more shut that stuff down and anybody that does bring them on don't let them play the middle somebody's like neutral or something and they've been around at this point i'm not talking about new people that may not know i'm talking about people that have been around and should know so i'm like them in other words treat them the way that we treated bill cosby after he said what he said treat them like coons because they are. How dare they do this to the community? I hope that this has been a benefit. Black as hearted, black as minded, black as man, sign them black out. Asalaamu Alaikum and black male heterosexual power just because they don't like it.